Hello, hello, everybody. Happy New Year's coming up in a day. And I just want to say happy 2020. Whatever's going on in 2019, let it go, let it go, let it go. Okay, so I want to welcome you to Big Mama Flossie's Kitchen. And today, we are going to talk about the etiquettes of fried chicken. Frying chicken, actually. And, uh, go on and put that on there, Michael. This is my fried chicken. My fried chicken is delicious. It's mouth-watering. It tastes delicious. Everybody always eats up my chicken. When I make chicken, it's never enough. I can make like 20 packs of chicken wings and people just tear them up i can have 25 legs and people just tear them up okay let me tell you the etiquette's about frying chicken okay now it irks me all the time when i see the cook shows i love watching cook shows okay i love it uh there's one that i particularly really love is mama soul kitchen she's on youtube as well and she's also on instagram and she has her own seasonings and she is just wonderful at cooking okay you guys need to check her out uh the next thing i want to say is uh the thing that really irks me is when you watch like the food uh channels on tv i won't put them on blast because i don't want them coming after me but anyway when you watch the food channels I don't know what it is, but it irks the mess out of me when people use salt and pepper to season their meat and poultries and game and sticks and beef and stuff like that. Why in the world do people use that stuff? Do you know that sodium and salt is the highest salt intake that is more than sodium than anything else that is served on there, sold on shelves? I tell you, it has more sodium than uh, salt alone. This has more sodium than garlic salt, seasoning salt, uh, other flavorings. Uh, you can use kosher salt. You can use uh, uh, other kinds of like Himalayan salts and pink sauce and stuff like that. But anyway, that's a little more fancy. But we're going to stick to the basics here. Uh, eating more healthy is more important. And when you just put on just salt and pepper, it just doesn't do anything for me. When you bite into it, that's when you go to a restaurant, you're paying $35 for a filet mignon. And uh, I know it's filet mignon, but I call it filet mignon because that's how it's spelled, okay? Uh, when you guys spend it all that money on the steak and it's just salt and pepper, it just irks me. Uh, honestly, when I do go out, I carry my own little seasoning packs with me. I take my own little Ziploc bags and my own fresh medley of the things that I like to have all mixed together and have my flavors popping, okay? Uh, I just can't see spending $35 on a little bit of ounce of meat and it just don't taste flavorful, okay? Alright, so, sticking to it, let's go over here to the poultry. Michael, look over there. Alright, so right here I have a whole chicken. I have some chicken legs, and this is our favorite in our uh, family when we are baking chicken. Family loves chicken legs. Oh, chicken legs, thighs, wings, whatever. But chicken legs is number one in our family. And we can also, uh, I was going to tell you about that because of the fact that when you buy chicken, sometimes when you buy a whole chicken, it's actually worth the money. And it's actually uh, worthy. And you can get a lot of pieces out of a whole chicken, you know, besides the legs. Sometimes you just have to kind of price it what's going on into the uh, meat section at your local choice supermarket. But when you are buying chicken, you know, you have to make sure that it's uh, fresh. And you got to make sure the expiration date is not tomorrow. Because if it is, you got to cook that stuff immediately. As soon as you walk in the door, get the frying pan ready and cook it. Okay? I don't suggest really doing that and freezing it because of the fact that, you know, you don't want salmonella and poultry poisoning and stuff like that. So, just be on the safe side. You know, use your own, you know, discretion. But, uh, be safe. And make sure the chicken is cooked thoroughly. Now, we're going to go back over there. Go back over there. Okay, so... Now, what you do is, uh, you can cut up the whole chicken, or you can buy the legs already ready and everything like that. Now, get this now. Wash your meat, folks, okay? Wash your meats, okay? Uh, you always wash chicken off thoroughly. You can use some loop-like temperature uh, water and make sure it's thoroughly cleaned, and then you can drain it on a paper towel. That's how I usually do it before I season it, okay? 
and then what you can do is go ahead the next step is get your black kettle iron skillet that is the secret to best fried chicken you guys if you guys don't listen to me you better listen to me now them little fancy little silver uh skillets it don't do it it don't do it it don't do it it's just pretty okay you don't want your chicken pretty you want your chicken edible okay i mean really i, I mean really i have i went to a friend's house and she had like some old chicken she said she fried the chicken and i ain't gonna score there but she's not african-american but bless her little heart she made me some fried chicken and when i got it the chicken was like soft and it wasn't crispy and it wasn't flavorful. And I said, what did you cook this in? She said, I cooked it in the skillet. I said, what kind of skillet? She told me it was a regular silver skillet. I said, ah, aha. Uh -huh. That was rule number one. That's a no-no, okay? You get you a black kettle, kettle cast iron skillet, okay? It's worth the money, and it's always worth it. I tell you, it makes a chicken come out perfect every time, okay? That's another secret. The next thing is back, put on the oils right there, Michael. Okay, next thing is the Crisco oil. I used to uh, fry all my chicken in the Crisco lard. And uh, that was over there. That's what they used to call it a long time ago. You know, they all say it's unhealthy and all that other stuff. But now they have Crisco uh, vegetable uh, uh, shortening. And, you know, I only use that for certain things. I don't use it for fried chicken. Some people do. It's okay. I don't know. Don't, don't let me rock your boat or anything like that, but I don't do it like that. What I do is I uh, buy, go back to the oil. Uh, I buy the vegetable oil, you know, Crisco or vegetable oil of your brand of uh, the grocery store. It doesn't matter if it's Crisco or not. It could be, uh, you know, great value. It could be uh, any kind of other kind. It don't matter. Vegetable oils is vegetable oil, okay? And if you notice, vegetable oil doesn't have any uh, fat content in it. Yeah. So, it's, you know, actually kind of cool. So, uh, the whole thing about that is turn around, read the labels, and, you know, just be aware. They're mostly made of the same thing, so it don't matter if you pay $3 a bottle Two dollars a bottle, one ninety three a bottle. It's the same thing. It's vegetable oil, okay? Now you can use Crisco if you want to. The Crisco shortening, if you want to, it's okay. But I use it for certain things, you know. Like sometimes I do my biscuits and I do some cookies and stuff like that. I'll use the Crisco uh, shortening lard there, okay? But you know, vegetable oil is good. Vegetable oils are good. Next thing is seasoning all right now we are talking about something folks okay okay now let me tell you seasoning will go a long way people really you guys really got to get away from that salt and pepper that salt and pepper is some bull pocket can y'all say bull pocket bull pocket that is just crazy i don't know why they do it and when they have those cook show competitions and they're like oh it's the salt and pepper i need the salt and pepper are you crazy get bring me the lawrence bring me the lawrence seasoning seasoning salt and the garlic salt and the man, oh, McCormick pepper. Oh, my, what is wrong with y'all? What is wrong with y'all? This is some good etiquette right here. If you really want people to talk about your food in a nice way, you guys do your stuff right. Don't be using no regular salt and pepper. The salt will kill you, okay? It will kill you. They talk about people having high blood pressure. Lord, have mercy. Jason, I'll tell you, you need to go on and get, go, go back to the seasoning, Michael, real close. Get you some Lowry seasoning shop. Get you some Lowry's garlic shop. Don't come back in there with that cheap old garlic shop from somebody else, okay? From Dollar Store, whatever you want to call it. You need this right here. This right here is the one, and it, it, I'm telling you, it has the garlic salt in it, and it has the little parsley flakes in it, and it has everything in it. I'm telling you, this is the one, okay? If you want flavor in your meat, you got to use this stuff. Now, listen to Big Mama. Big Mama ain't going to steal you wrong, okay? You need to buy some of this. I'm not being promoted for it. I'm not getting paid for it yet. But 
I'm not playing. When it comes down to me throwing down in my kitchen and my guests being happy, I buy the good stuff. We talked about that on my other etiquettes about, you know, cheese platters and meat platters and bologna and all that other stuff. Yeah, same thing. Don't go cheap, folks. Y'all get some good seasoning up in your cabinets, okay? Because of the fact that it's going to make your food taste good. I'm not playing. Okay, I seen some people that fried some chicken at the church, and they brought some church chicken in there, and the people was turning their nose up and talking about them like a dog, okay? I'm telling you, it's not a fun thing being on the other side of that table. I'm telling you, if you don't want to be talking about, you get these three things right here. Go back to that, Michael, right there. That will answer all your prayers. And ladies, one other thing. If you're trying to catch a man... That's what you do. You get the Caesar new. You all understand? Caesar new will get you a man. Okay? All right. Let's go over here to the flower, Michael, right over there. Okay. So, get you some white all-purpose flower. It could be any brand, but I usually like gold metal. Gold metal's really good, and I use been in the family for years, and I've been using it for biscuits, bridge, and pancakes, and you just name it. I name it. I use this for everything, okay? Now, I ain't knocking down other uh, flower companies or nothing like that, but gold metals, I have really good uh, things about that, so I suggest you get you some good flour, okay, white flour. Now, some people ask, oh, can you use unbleached flour? Oh, can you use organic flour? You know what? Do whatever you want to do. But if you want to catch a man and you want your food to taste good, listen to me, okay? You can do your experiments on your time, but don't be putting Big Mama Flossie's Kitchen in your mouth and then you using some substitutes of something like olive oil. Go back to that oil real quick. Olive oil because you want to eat it more healthy. Oh, you uh, ha. Go on with that. Don't even try it. Don't even try it. Now, you can use some canola oil. You can use some peanut oil when you're frying. But when I'm telling you something, use some vegetable oil when you are frying chicken. You can do whatever you want on your time. But when it's on Mama Flosh's time, vegetable oil, okay? That's clear with you, okay? The next step would be a paper bag okay a paper bag y'all i'm serious okay you need to pour your flour into the bag after you go through the steps michael the chicken wash your chicken thoroughly you're gonna heat up your grease in the skillet cast iron skillet you're gonna season your chicken thoroughly on all sides okay not too much salt though not too much of that you know seasoning salt though okay then you're gonna pour the flour into a paper bag you can use a plastic bag if you want or a plastic little grocery bag whatever but if you want this right and extra crispy listen to mama floss it okay put the flour into a paper bag a lot you know so make sure you're covering up your pieces then you're gonna shake it shake it shake it like a money maker shake it shake it shake it bring on the money okay shake it till it's floured all nice and thoroughly your grease should be nice and hot on the stove and it should be bubbling the sizzling when you put like a if you just sprinkle a little bit of water just a tinkle bit of it just go ting and it go ting, ping, pop, pop. Hey, when it does that when it talks back to you in the skillet the grease is ready to be used, okay? If it, you put a little water in it, sprinkle a little water in there, and it don't do nothing. It ain't ready. It ain't ready, okay? So put it on a medium, medium high flame to get it warm, to get it hot, okay? And then test it. Little sprinkle water, just sprinkle, not a whole bunch. Sprinkle, just a tinkle, beep, and it go beep, 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 beep. When talk back to you, it's ready, everybody, okay? Then you're going to put your pieces in your grease. And then you go ahead, you let it cook for about 10 minutes. You turn it down a little bit, just a little bit. You don't want to burn it, okay? Burnt chicken, they'll talk about you like a dog, just like they did at the church. I'm telling you right now. So you go ahead and turn it over after 10 minutes. You let that cook for another 10 minutes. This should be nice and a little bit of light brown, less pretty brown, okay? Then you're going to turn it over one more time and do it for another five minutes just to make sure that stuff is done. You don't want no pink chicken, no runny red chicken. You want that stuff right. And don't use frozen chicken. It has to be room temperature, okay? And then you roll it over for another 
two minutes on the other side and it should be nice and golden brown you stick your fork in it to make sure no blood ain't coming up it should be all clear juice coming out of that chicken put it on a paper towel and drain it folks drain your chicken okay i hate gracie chicken grain your chicken drain it on a paper towel everybody okay all right then you come out with these results look at that just look at that that is some good homemade fried chicken mama flossy kitchen style now that's how you fry chicken it makes your mouth water make you want to go slap somebody at the border your mama your grandmama whatever do what i tell you now that's my kitchen chicken fried chicken etiquettes and thank you very much for watching my show the next time we're gonna have something very exciting i promise you so stay tuned make sure you hit the subscribe button below and the notification bell for more future updates of mama flosh's kitchen y'all have a nice day